Hello everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how to create and apply any type of watermark, whether it be text or logo, to your photos in Lightroom Classic. Hi there, Richard here. Welcome back to the channel and to another video. I'm a photographer living near the south coast of England. And on top of that, I try to make videos each week about photography and editing. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. Now, today's video is all about Lightroom and adding watermarks to your photos. That could be in either text or logo format. Um, I'm going to take you through the process about setting them up and how you apply them to your images as you export them, really simple, shouldn't take too long, but if you've watched this video before, you know that I can ramble, so, and I've started already, so let's crack on. Right, so first up, let's look at how, no, sorry, let's look at why you should consider applying watermarks to your logo, uh, to your photos. There could be many reasons. Uh, one of them could be because you want to kind of like advertise, and if you put photos out there, um, or maybe you do a free shoot for somebody and you want to get your name on the photo so that people can see you and if they want to book you as well they know who it is. Our wedding photos for example we got the full set of obviously non uh, logoed or non copyrighted or non um, tagged images but the photographer also gave us a the same photos in low res for sharing on social media but in the bottom right hand corner he had his name so if we did decide to just share those on social media with that name on there other people would know who took those photos. So that's a great bit of advertising. Uh, the second reason that you may want to add your watermark or your uh, logo or copy or um, a, some kind of watermark to your photos is to for recognition. So let's say you're sharing photos on in groups on Facebook or you're sharing them on social media or on a website or um, you know any anywhere in the in the World Wide Web or hanging them on a wall in a cafe if you've got to deal with a local cafe or something I don't know some people do it near us um, again it's like a little bit of free advertising you get recognition for that photo people see that photo and they think wow we like that style we want to book that photographer because we want photos just like that um, and they know who to contact they know who to go to they know who to Google um, and that is another good reason to do it. Um, and the third reason that I'm going to say today is to protect them. So perhaps you want to put a logo on there so that if it gets shared, um, you know, when you've not allowed it to be shared, you know, someone shared it against you without your permission, basically. Um, maybe you want to sort of discourage that because it has got your name on it or because it has got a watermark on it or because it has got some kind of logo on it that would stop someone basically claiming it as their own or using it without your permission. Um, so that last one was to protect your images. Now I'm going to go on to the ones now that um, for the reasons why you might not want to um, watermark your photos, which may seem counterintuitive considering this is a video all about watermarking your logos, watermarking your logos, watermarking your photos. Um, so why would I talk about not doing it or why you wouldn't want to do it? Well, because then you can make the decision. So the first reason might surprise you. Okay, so the first reason for not watermarking your photos is to protect them. And yes, that was the same as the last reason um, that I just spoke about. But with today's technology, a watermark has to be really intrusive, I think, if you really, really, really want to protect it. If somebody wants to take the time, unless it's a very complicated watermark over a very complicated photo or very um, detailed photo where it's going to take a very, very long time to remove the watermark, somebody could. If you've got your name in the bottom right-hand corner, that's going to be cropped out really easily. Um, and if you've plastered a big logo across the front of the photo, that's going to ruin the photo. You can put it in little areas around the photo. I just think it looks a bit untidy. I stick with my name in the bottom right hand corner and that's enough for me. Um, but it may not be enough for you. It's up to you. But why would you want to show your best work with a massive copyright or a massive logo stuck across the middle of the photo? Personal preference, okay? Really subjective. That's just my thoughts. Uh, the next reason is just because you don't want to. You know, I mean, if you're proud of your photos and you're doing it for fun and you're not bothered if anyone uses them or doesn't know who took it, then great. Don't watermark it. You know, you're not going to lose anything by not doing that. Um, 
if it doesn't bother you if they're borrowed that's fine i don't mind it you know i'd never know but if i did find out i would probably speak to somebody if they use one of my photos without permission i wouldn't expect that to happen maybe i'm being naive but um it's it's personal preference again you might just not you just might not care you might just think well if somebody wants to go to all that trouble of taking someone else's photo and claiming it as their own good to them but as a professional it's what you earn your money on you probably wouldn't want that to happen um so just bear that in mind when there's your reason as to why you may not want to do it um, like i say mine is just a little name in the bottom right hand corner and that's good enough for me um, and i've never really had a problem in doing that so that's it there's the reasons why you should or may why you may think about watermarking watermarking them and why you may think about not watermarking them so let's now jump into lightroom and i'm going to show you really quickly how you actually can do it on in lightroom you set up the watermark set up a text watermark set up a logo watermark and then how you apply it to your photo which really happens on export so we are going to jump into lightroom right now So this is going to be a really easy process and it shouldn't take very long at all. So you've got your screen here, you've got your photo, uh, you have the photo on there because then you can see how it's going to look. So really, really straightforward. Top left hand corner, come up to the Lightroom Classic menu and you have the option here that says Edit Watermarks. Click on that. The first thing we are going to look at is the text option. You have a graphic here and you have a text. We are going to do the text one first. In the bottom box at the corner here, you can, sorry, the bottom uh, text box underneath the photo down here, you can see there is a blank box and we can just type in whatever you want to put in there. I'm going to put in the copyright symbol plus my plus my name, simple as that. And on a Mac, to get the copyright symbol, it's a uh, symbol, it's option G. And I believe on a Windows PC, it is control alt and C. So I'm just going to type in copyright Richard Chubb. Okay, and you can see by default, that's put it down in the bottom left hand corner. That may not be where you want it. So just bear with me for one second because we are going to adjust that in a moment. Um, back to the top right hand corner here, you've got image options, which we can ignore. Below that we have text options. It's really simple options here. There's nothing complicated. It's basically the sort of thing you'd find in any text editor, your font, your style, where you'd like it align aligned. That alignment is in within the text box, not within the picture. We're going to come on to that in a minute. So the alignment is within the text box, not within the picture. Um, I'm just going to leave it uh, less center in inside that text box. Um, and then what color do you want the text? I just have mine as white, which as you can see straight away will cause a problem on a white background. So I suggest you add a little shadow and all that does is just puts a shadow around the text and you can then see it on any color background, whether it be white or black or blue or green or whatever color it is. Adjust all these. I mean, I don't mess around with these too much, but you can fiddle with these settings until you're happy with them. Once you are, um, I'm going to actually make the shadow a little bit denser. So we're going to go to 100 for the opacity of the shadow. Um, once you're happy with that, the next one to look at is the watermark effects. So we're going to close text options and we're going to open watermark effects. Now, this tells you what the uh, watermark will actually look like now, not just the font and things like that. So the opacity is 100, I don't want to fade it out at all, I'm going to have it 100. The proportional size is the size of the watermark in comparison to or in relation to the size of the photo. So I think 10 is a good size and that will make it 10 whatever the resolution of the photo is. So it's not like 10 pixels or 10 inches or anything like that, it's basically just um, relative to the size of the photo. So if it's a small photo, it will be a smaller watermark. If it's a big photo, it will be a bigger watermark and so on. Um, inset is how far you want it from the top or the bottom or the left or the right. And you have this anchor point here. Now I always have mine in the bottom right. So this is pretending this is your photo here, top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. I'm gonna click down here and we can now see the, uh, the watermark has moved to the bottom right. And I just want to bring the inset in so that it's a little bit away from the edge and a little bit away from the bottom. Uh, maybe down a little bit lower actually because it's too high. That's pretty much it. That's the text watermark done. Uh, you can rotate it if you want to. So if you watch the watermark as I click on this, it does flick a different way around. Um, I just have it bottom right hand side, bottom right hand corner, sorry, 
with those simple settings and that's all I do. Uh, once you've, you're happy with all the settings, you click on save. I'm gonna call it C for copyright and then my name. So I now know that that is a copyright Richard Chubb watermark and I'm gonna click on create. And that has now saved that template if you like in the background. So that is it now for text. We've done that for text and now we're gonna look at how we do it if you wanted to add a logo on the bottom there instead of text. Now we are gonna add a logo to the bottom right hand corner. Uh, we've just done the text one, so let's now look at adding a logo there. So we are gonna come up to the top left hand corner again, Lightroom Classic and Edit Watermarks. And this time we are gonna select the graphic option in the top right hand corner. And as soon as I hit that checkbox, I get this import dialog box and we choose navigate to where you may have saved your logo. This is one of my logos here that I'm gonna just use for this example. Click on that, it's just a simple JPEG and we're gonna click on choose. Again, it's by default, it's put it in the bottom left-hand corner. Obviously, it is not text, so we can ignore the text box options at all, and the image option box is just where you click to choose it if you wanted to change it. So we are just gonna have a look at the watermark effects. So the first thing I'm gonna do though now is move this to the bottom right-hand corner, and I'm just gonna get those insets right so that I'm happy with where that logo is. And again, you can just play. I'm leaving that as 10. Um, I'm happy with that size. I may actually make it a little bit smaller. And the last thing you can do if you want to is adjust the opacity. And you can see there the bottom right hand corner of the logo is just fading slightly. Let's just leave it on 100. And again, you can hit the rotate buttons exactly the same as you would for text. And it just turns that round into the angle or the, the ratio or the rotation that you want it. I'm gonna leave that as it is there, which is Happy enough for me, I'm, I'm happy with that. And we're gonna click save. And again, we can just say RCP, Richard Chubb Photography, logo. And we're gonna click create. I do have other logos and watermarks saved for different things, but those two will be added to it. And we're gonna now look real quick at how we can apply that to a photograph as we export it. So let's go back to the screen and I'll show you how we do that now, really easy. Okay, so you can export from both the library or the develop module. Um, and in fact, you can create the watermarks from both the library and the develop module. Um, I tend to mainly export from the library module because then I can click on grid view and see all the images I want to export. Um, I'm just gonna export two or three for the time being using Max as a model here. Uh, highlight the ones you want. I've highlighted these three photos here and we are gonna go up to file and export. Now I have lots of presets, export presets, and I'm gonna do another video on that shortly, but we can ignore, you set up these as you would, I'm assuming that you know how to do exports and, and simple things like this. If you don't, subscribe, and you'll see that in a future video. But for now, we're just gonna look at this watermarking um, box here. Make sure that you have that watermark ticked. And then here you have a drop down box where you see all the logos that are set up and you can see the C or copyright Richard Chubb logo here and you can see the RCP logo here which are the ones that we just created. So for this we are gonna pick the C Richard Chubb one and we are going to just click export. I know where these are going, the sizes are okay. Like I say, don't worry about the other settings for now, this is just all about the watermark and we are gonna click on export that has exported really quickly and we have the three photos here and if we open them we can see there bottom right hand corner is the simple watermark logo like i said really easy to get rid of that if you wanted to especially on a plain white background right near the bottom but you know so be it i'm not too fussed about things like that um, and that's it exported let's just quickly go back and do exactly the same thing with file Export, this time we are gonna pick the RCP logo. It's gonna happen really quickly. It says they're still there, obviously, because we've just, or they're already existing, because we've just exported them. So we're gonna use unique names for this. And we now have three with the logo, which I don't like, it's too obtrusive for me, um, but it's personal preference. Um, but the bottom line is we now have both logos or both sets of images exported with the two different logos, whether that be text or your logo JPEG, your logo image.
So that's it. Like I said, I was hoping it was going to be a quick one. It's still probably about 10, 15 minutes. I don't know. I can never get these down to quick tutorials, but you know. Um, decide for yourself which one you like. Decide for yourself if you even want to do this. If you're not bothered, that's cool too. It's, there's no law about what you have to do, or what you don't have to do. It's really about getting your name out of there, recognition. And if you think it protects your image, then by all means, do that as well. Whatever you decide, I'm going to say thank you for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you found this video a little bit useful. Like, share, comment, subscribe to the channel. Do all that stuff. It really helps the channel and keeps me motivated to keep producing these little videos that I do. Um, and stay tuned for more videos about Lightroom photography, editing and the like. Until next time, thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video. Thank you.